Today I'm going to present an uh, overview of SSAS administration with C-Sharp, and AMO stands for Analysis Management Objects. Um, so just briefly, um, what that is, is it's a assembly or a uh, set of tools that's integrated into the .NET framework, and we can access that, and while I'm going to use C-Sharp today, as that's my preferred language, it's also accessible through uh, Visual Basic, of course. Um, and it's essentially just a way we can connect to our analysis services um, server and our cubes and our, our databases there, and we can perform different management uh, functions on them, as well as design, really. I mean, it gives us a, a very large range of capabilities. So that's what that is. Um, looks like we've got some people who are a little bit more familiar with C Sharp, so, but, but we've also got quite a few who are relatively new. So as time allows, I'm going to spend just a little bit more time focusing on some of the C-sharp um, more basic elements as well as the actual SSAS uh, AMO topic. So what we're going to cover today is uh, first thing is importing the references to the project so we can actually access AMO. Uh, then we're going to create our server connection. We're going to create partitions. We're going to process those partitions. And um, we're also going to detach and attach a database in read-only mode uh, as an example for a scale-out operation. Um, and that's going to cover some of the um, patterns that you'll be able to follow, even if you aren't necessarily detaching and attaching databases. Uh, it's going to give you an example of how to execute some of your XML A on your uh, server. And don't worry, we won't, we've got a, a couple of slides I want to um, make sure that I stay on track and that we give you the information that that'll be, these will be up uh, on my blog as well. Uh, so you can down that, download it later and hopefully if, if you're just looking for one thing, you can go to that instead of watching the whole video again. Um, so first things that we do when we want to get going with AMO is we need to add the analysis services DLL to our project. Um, that's typically going to be located in your SQL Server directory. Uh, you need to install the SDK when you're Installing SQL Server, or you can revisit that install later with the uh, installation media. Uh, just as an example, your x86 SQL 2014 path to that DLL will be C program files x86, Microsoft SQL Server slash 110 slash SDK slash assemblies, and the name of it is Microsoft.AnalysisServices.DLL. And we'll see how that's important and why we need to know where that is in uh, just a moment. So uh, just a quick screenshot here of where, where that is in your environment, what it looks like if you aren't familiar with adding project references. Uh, on the left, we see the Solution Explorer. So if you're working in a C-sharp project, uh, you'll see that one of the uh, folders that we have expanded right there is the references folder and I've got highlighted the Microsoft.analysis services. Uh, once we add that essentially we gain access in our project to all of the capabilities of the AMO um, assembly. If we don't add it then you're going to get a lot of um, compile errors and your red squigglies showing you that it's not able to access um, those built-in functions and objects. Um, and the other things, if you can do this, this is something you can either do as a standalone uh, .NET application or you could do it in the script task within SSIS. So if you're using the SSIS um, script task, you will still need to add the reference, but you'll do that after you open the script task window. Uh, you'll, so instead of looking in your SSIS uh, SSDT uh, interface, you will instead go to your task, open it, click the edit script, and then you'll be able to get this same sort of view and add your reference. Um, another note with that is that if you're using VB uh, Visual Basic, then your references, that references folder is hidden by default. And all you need to do is you'll just click the um, show all files item, and I'll show you that in the um, Visual Studio once we switch over to it. Um, I will get my pointer loaded up at that time. But just be aware that if you start a VB project and you don't see that references, uh, it's just hidden by default and you can access it by clicking show all files. 
Uh, another thing I wanted to point out, especially if you're new to AMO, um, and if you haven't seen this, this was something that um, I honestly didn't know about till a little while ago, um, and that is the object browser. Um, so after you've added that assembly to your project, um, and you want to know what are the capabilities now, what, what did I just add to my project, uh, you can just, in that same Solution Explorer, double-click the assembly reference, uh, or you can right-click and view an object browser. And what this gives you is the screen we see right here, and it just gives you a, a nice long list of all the objects, functions, methods, and properties that analysis services, your AMO assembly, gives you. Um, and so if you're, you know, the, the, <laughs> the biggest issue sometimes with Googling is if you don't know what term you're looking for. Um, so this gives you kind of a different route to go through and explore what capabilities exist in AMO and if they're maybe named something differently than you expected. Uh, as you can see on the left hand side you've got all of our different things like uh, aggregations and all kinds of different um, elements and uh, functions, classes that we can access to control our aggregations in SSAS. And then on the right side we get a little bit more details, some links to documentation and a summary. So it's a really nice way to kind of explore what's available in AMO. Um, Microsoft documentation, of course, is out there. Uh, it's pretty good, but it's not, I wouldn't say, um, as extensive as some of the other things, and the number of blog posts and that covering this is uh, a little bit less, so this can be helpful. So uh, I also wanted to cover quickly design considerations with AMO before we we dig too far into it. Um, one of those is the ill at ease, as we sometimes refer to them, so things like maintainability, expandability, versatility. Um, we want to make sure that if we elect to go the AMO route for our management of the server or um, creation of cubes, partitions, stuff like that, that we're creating a solution that's not introducing uh, more of a maintenance headache, um, that we're not limiting ourselves in the way that we create this application uh, in terms of our, first, you know, uh, the inevitable change requests and uh, issues that arise in, in how the business expects their analysis to perform and what, excuse me, when they expect it to perform. Uh, the other thing that we like to see and I would suggest is that um, a lot of BI developers and BI teams have um, less exposure. Um, to programming and you know if you're not the one that's maintaining it we just want to keep it simple uh, make sure that we add those comments even if it seems a little bit um, excessive I know that especially if folks are a uh, little bit more advanced with their programming you might not feel the need to um, comment some of the things that you're doing but 